presentation is going to discuss ISO 17020 for CMMC C3PAO specifically. My name is Christopher Powers. I'm the founder of Oxbridge Quality Resources. We're going to go through quickly what is required of CMMC certification bodies and specifically in order for them to obtain ISO 17020 accreditation. First of all, understand that the CMMC accreditation body has officially demanded that all CMMC third party assessment organizations or C3PAOs must be accredited to ISO 17020. So what is ISO 17020? Basically, it is a standard published by ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, that defines rules for the operation of an inspection body. And the goal here is to ensure that the results of an inspection body are trustworthy, first of all, that an inspection body operates objectively and fairly. Now, it's not yet clear who will accredit the C3PAOs to ISO 17020. Oh, technically, it's a job that should be done by the CMMC AB itself but so far it does not appear that the AB intends to pursue that role. Instead, it's likely that the C3PAOs will have to obtain ISO 17020 accreditation by an existing accreditation body such as ANAB or UCAS. But as of right now, it's not clear who is going to do that. No matter who is going to be granting the actual accreditation, each C3PAO will have to do three main steps. The first step is buy a copy of the ISO 17020 uh, revision 2012 standard. And you can get that from those two websites there. You can get it from ISO. If you're in the United States, you can get it from ANSI and I believe you get a slight discount. Next, you're going to have to implement the requirements of ISO 17020. This can include implementing ISO 9001 alongside it, which I'll talk about in a moment or implementing the ISO 9001 style requirements embedded in the ISO 17020 standard itself. But you will be expected to simultaneously comply with the requirements of ISO 9001. Again, we'll talk about that in a moment. And once you've implemented ISO 17020, the final step is to actually become accredited to it. And again, that'll be done by either the CMMCAB itself or perhaps another body such as UCAS or ANAP. We're not sure yet. That will involve undergoing an audit by that body. Uh, they will then grant you your accreditation and then you'll have to go undergo uh, annual audits thereafter. So what is ISO 17020? It is a standard published by the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, that is aimed at inspection bodies. Inspection bodies are those who perform inspection services. Now, these can be for the inspection of products, processes, or of services. The typical ISO style inspection body will likely provide third party inspection of products, such as electrical components, medical devices, toys, even software. And then they provide a final inspection certificate. For the CMMC scheme, however, such bodies will inspect the client company's processes for compliance against the CMMC model itself. Now, the ISO 17020 standard talks about three types of inspection bodies. Type A is for third party inspection service bodies. This would be for CMMC C3PAOs. You are a third party inspection body. In other words, you are inspecting the processes of someone else that you are unrelated to. Type B is for those that perform first party or second party inspection, either for themselves or on behalf of their customers. And it's where the inspection body is an independent function, not connected to maybe the uh, part of the organization that manufactures a product. This would not be applicable to the CMMC scheme. Type C, similar, uh, it's where the inspection body is a first or second party uh, inspection service provider, but where the inspections are dependent. In other words, they might be doing inspection of products that they actually manufacture. It's the highest risk. Again, this would not apply to the CMMC scheme. ISO 17020 emphasizes the need for inspection bodies to be impartial and independent so that the results of their inspection can be trusted and free of any suspicions. This is obviously critical 
when C3PAOs will be issuing certifications to CMMC attesting to the uh, validity of their cybersecurity controls. So the body must identify and manage risks to impartiality, including conflicts of interest. While ISO 17020 standard does not require a procedure here, any accreditation body that you're going to be audited by will likely demand to see a procedure anyway. So expect to have to write procedures around this. These procedures will have to define the body's policies on conflicts of interest and then the methods that those are identified, ranked for risk, and then mitigated. The problem in the CMMC scheme is that the bulk of candidate C3PAOs right now are simultaneously cybersecurity consulting firms. And worse than that, they may be the competitors of the companies that they're going to be providing CMMC assessments for. So this creates a potentially messy web of conflicts that have to be managed. So this part of ISO 17020 might be something that other organizations such as product uh, certification bodies uh, have less of a hard time with, but for the C3PAOs, it's going to be a real challenge. Failure to adequately ensure objective impartiality will prohibit you from achieving accreditation to ISO 17020. Most of all, acting as a C3PAO, you must have the willingness and fortitude to deny or withdraw a CMMC certification with as much conviction as you do to grant it. It's easy to go into an audit and give the client good news and grant them CMMC, let's say level three. It's going to be far more difficult to go in and objectively and honestly and calmly tell that client that you're not going to certify them because they simply don't pass. Or later on, to have a client that you developed a relationship with and years later, you have to go in now and tell them that, well, they no longer comply and you have to take that away. That is a key aspect of operating as a CMMC C3PAO and you must understand that now before you even attempt to become one. If you don't have that willingness and fortitude, then you shouldn't pursue this. Because inspection bodies also handle confidential information, such as the weaknesses or failings of the clients that it's going to audit, the body must have methods in place to manage confidentiality, including legally enforceable confidentiality agreements with staff, subcontractors, vendors, and customers. Again, here the ISO 17020 standard does not require a procedure, but your accreditation body likely will, so expect to have to write one. Next, the standard goes on to define the requirements for the structure of the inspection body, again, with the intent to ensure impartiality while reducing conflicts of interest and managing risk. Here, the approach will be different for each C3PAO. So whatever advice I give one company might be different for the one I give the next one. And the standard cannot predict every scenario. So here, procedures are called out by the standard, necessary to formally define your structure the list of inspection services that you intend on claiming proficiency in, in this case, CMMC. The organizational structure must be defined along with the documented roles and responsibilities for key staff and management. The managers, deputies, and other roles must be defined and job descriptions must be developed for all of them. There are also requirements that the body holds suitable liability insurance, a fact that some bodies miss when they don't read the fine print of the standard. Next, the standard goes on to require certain resources. It must have adequate resources to ensure that you can provide services in a competent and impartial manner. And this means having enough people, equipment, facilities, and utilities related to providing inspection activities. This also presents a serious risk to new bodies seeking ISO 17020 accreditation, as they must be able to prove they can support the particular scheme they intend on offering services for. A one-man cybersecurity consulting firm will not likely comply with ISO 17020 if they intend on appraising a thousand CMMC companies every year. You'll have to have a detailed ramp-up plan, which will show how you intend to increase your resources to match the increasing demand over time. Now for personnel, the inspection body must have documented procedures on hiring and training with defined criteria for qualification of key personnel. The inspection body must perform witnessing activities of their new inspectors in the field before fully qualifying them. And then you have to have records of training and witnessing must be maintained. For equipment facilities and utilities, the inspection body must have procedures on selection and maintenance of such equipment. 
Now for CMMC bodies, this will include necessary hardware and software infrastructure to support the handling of any CUI or customer data, as well as for reporting results to the DOD. Now this can open up requirements for the C3PAO itself to have information security management protocols in place for its own operations before ever assessing those of its CMMC clients. Also, critical equipment and systems may be required to be preventively maintained, as well as calibrated or verified against national standards. This is probably not going to be a large concern for CMMC bodies, but it's something to consider. Where the inspection body uses third-party vendors or subcontractors, it must have procedures in place for the selection, approval, and ongoing evaluation of those subcontractors. And then if you intend to sub subcontract any of that inspection work, it must be done under very strict rules, or you can't get accredited to ISO 17020. Now, a bulk of the standard is then dedicated to defining what you have to do to define your own inspection activities. ISO 17020 does not go into detail on these because it can't know what every inspection activity of every reader will be. So therefore, you will have to determine what that is. Now, of course, inspection activities are the main service deliverable of any inspection body. So the ISO 17020 standard has some considerable but flexible requirements here. All inspection activities must be documented in formal procedures, and then the inspectors must be trained on those. In this case, these activities must then comply with the applicable scheme requirements, such as the rules issued by the CMMC AB. Before taking any inspection work, the body must perform a formal contract review to ensure it only accepts work within its area of expertise and its capabilities and capacity. Next, the inspection body must have a formal procedure on how it will objectively and formally process complaints and appeals. Now, in this context, a complaint typically can come from the body's client or any third party at all, even a member of the public. An appeal typically refers to one of two things. It's where someone does not like the result of the complaint and wants to escalate a complaint, or it could be a CMMC client is appealing a finding from a CMMC appraisal. In all cases, the procedures must be made public to ensure the public has insight into how the body will process complaints and appeals. Finally, and this gets a little complicated, ISO 17020 requires additional requirements for the overall management of the company called a management system. In this case, you have two choices. You can implement the famous ISO standard, ISO 9001, which is a quality management system standard, and become certified to that. By doing that, you will automatically comply with the requirements of 17020 related to management system requirements. The benefit there is that you will get a second certification, ISO 9001, which adds additional international recognition. And of course, it's the most famous ISO standard of all. The downside is that that costs more. Plus you have to go through another audit by a third entity, namely an ISO 9001 certification body that would not be done by the accreditation body issuing your ISO 17020. So that can add expense and time and a little bit of redundancy. Your second choice is that the ISO 17020 standard instead considers that you may not want to pursue ISO 9001, and so it lists some management system requirements, which they've essentially copied and pasted from ISO 9001 itself. In that case, you simply implement those. Now, the big benefit there is that there's no additional cost. You don't have to pay anything extra for another set of ISO 9001 certification audits. The downside is the requirements that are embedded in ISO 17020 are not as robust as 9001. It'll result in a less effective C3PAO organization, and you'll have lower international recognition. That may or may not be a concern in the CMMC world. These management system requirements are numerous, but essentially they break down to general rules on how you're going to develop your internal procedures, then how you're going to control those documents to make sure that people only have the latest uh, approved revisions, how you're going to control, maintain, protect, and preserve records. And then there are rules on management reviews, internal audits, corrective actions, and preventive actions. Before you undergo any third-party ISO 17020 accreditation audit by the accreditation body, you must do three things. You must complete a full internal audit of yourself against ISO 17020 and the CMMCAB requirements specific to C3PAOs. 
You have to then close any gaps and findings that you've discovered. And then you must hold at least one comprehensive management review event, which is where top management gathers together, looks at a lot of data to see how well the company is doing. Those three things have to happen or you would immediately fail your ISO 17020 accreditation audit. Now, where Oxbridge steps in is we can assist on this implementation using our Oxbridge ISO 17020 implementation program. In this case, what we do is we develop the necessary accreditation documentation and internal procedures for you based on interviews with your staff. We then help identify risks and conflict of interest, and then we help you develop plans to mitigate those risks and conflicts of interest. We then develop the corrective and preventive action system. We train the staff, and of course, we provide general implementation and consulting throughout the process. Finally, we will do the full internal audit for you and then help you close any internal audit findings. And again, that'll be against the ISO 17020 requirements plus any requirements of the CMMC AB. We then help you sit through a full comprehensive management review event, and we will help you apply for ISO 17020 accreditation with your applicable and chosen accreditation body. And of course, the thing you're most concerned about is how much is it gonna cost? We estimate that the cost on these cost about $18,000 could be a little bit more for very large organizations, and it could be less for maybe very tiny C3PAOs. And the timeline is about three months, but can be done in two months if everyone pushes pretty hard. If you want more information, of course, visit oxbridge.com or call 1-863-651-3750, or you can email me at chris at oxbridge.com and I'll be glad to provide a quote or provide more information on how you can get ISO 17020 accredited in order to operate as a CMMC C3PAO. Thank you.